subcommittee on property, and we're going to start with the uh, horticulture project and get an update from our architects, Dietz and Company, Kevin and Shelby. Is that right? Thank you. Um, so why don't we jump right in and let Kevin? Okay, so after the last meeting, we, we saw that our kind of new building approach with the larger program um, was way more expensive than what we could kind of figure for the, for the project. And so we were in the direction to, one, reduce the program, and two, to uh, look at reuse of the existing building. And right. So that's, that's kind of where we're where we're at right now is looking at different options for how we could do that or or not. And uh, let me jump in a second on what what's the budget we're working with, Kevin? Um, my understanding it's four point nine million. Correct. Thereabouts. Yep. So that's what we're that's what we're trying to get to. Um, you know, it's a complex in nature as all these building projects are. Um, so we provide the program so it's gonna it's gonna be what we've um, kind of what you've said to us and what we've agreed on. Um, and we have um, a new adjacency diagram to go over that just to make sure that we're keeping up to date. Um, this is the existing building plan for building E and we wanted to kind of show this to Show what what is here right now. I mean, when this building was built, it was kind of assembled from a bunch of different buildings that were in different locations on the land, and kind of brought and relocated to the place where it is now, and assembled with connectors of CMU walls. Yeah. You know, and this is back in the 1970s. So it's, as you know, probably not the greatest structure, and you know, it's been updated to be kind over the years to you know to you know assume the role that you kind of need it to be um, which is you know classrooms and garage space and storage so so just to like look at the building so we have it we do have a garage space out here um, then two classroom spaces I think this is an electrical room here and a storage room and then back here we have some toilet rooms and a little hallway connecting the two classrooms. So when we, you know, first looked at this building, we're trying to figure out how do we turn this into a modern, you know, building where you can get from one place to another. And so, you know, we put that, you know, kind of this as being like, you know, that would do that. This is being kind of a spine of the building to get us from this side to this side without taking up too much space in these front areas and that's kind of where we started off with some of these ideas <coughs> so um, you can kind of see here this the greenhouse remains and then this is the area of the existing building that stays and then we have an addition to the west side and addition to the, um, the east and trying to stay within the existing kind of approximately within the existing site area so that we're not, you know, messing too much with the roadways, you know, and, you know, looking at this as a way to try and not spend more money, you know, to, you know, make move things around on the site as much as we can. Um, this one does have a benefit of, like, keeping this transformer, which feeds out not just to this building, but to uh, the uh, Building M, which is the one down the hill, and then I think to some of the lots of the um, spaces as well. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that was my understanding. Just for a point of reference, Kevin, just for the best, the this particular option one, the classroom space, that is where the current storage barn is. Correct? You'd be taking that barn down. This correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, just as a reference. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think you know all of them. We, trying to stay away from the greenhouse, you know, that does require sun, so the closer we build to that, the, the less sun it, it's going to get. Um, we are leaving a little space here. This is on the west side, so um, 
know, I think they'll have to look at this a little bit further. These are really conceptual ideas, uh, but you know, we'll have to do you know later on. Sun studies will have to be done to make sure that you're getting the proper sunlight for that building. Um, same thing with this. You know, this is going to be somewhat creating a shadow, but you know, we can adjust angles. And once we get some more defined like information on the building and the site, we can, we can do a better job with um, moving things around. But th these are more like ideas to explore right now. Just to get your thoughts on them. This one does have the um, ability to like create a simple geometry here and simple geometry here, kind of keep them separated so that we're not intersecting roofs, which you know might not go together well. Uh, that was kind of the idea um, behind this one, trying to keep these as isolated. And the idea here would, you know, ideally we would like to like leave that alone as much as possible. But I think you know between creating the corridor, um, updating the bathrooms, and then also updating the um, MEP and fire protection systems that we need to be in there. You know, there's <laughs> not a lot left at the end of the day. And, uh, and so, um, all right, so this one uses up more footprint. And we did I put together some ideas for costs. You know, these are these are really rough, so please don't take them um, too seriously until we start getting an estimator to look at them. Um, these are just ideas, and you know, we're we're you know, in the you know, four and a half to upper five million dollar range for this particular one. And we we just kind of assigned the same cost per square foot for the, for the building, whether it's renovated or new, just thinking that we're going to have to do quite a bit of work on the inside of that existing building to make it both code compliant and work functionally for you. So just as a point of reference, Kevin, I, the, thank you for the estimated building cost. The other costs are on top of that. Sir. Yeah. these. You know, this is the building area, and so we just assigned the cost per square foot is the level. Tim, you're good at that. Well, it's just, I have to get to the library. Oh, and then these are some additional costs that would be over and above the bill, just the basic building costs. Okay. You know, once again, estimated. You know, I'm not exactly sure, you know, I have an idea of what the utilities might be. You know, we're going to have to go, if we want this to be on a gas, a natural gas system, we're going to have to go get that. Um, I don't think it's very close to this building right now. It's, um, I forget what the building name is, or the building number, but between building B and the one that's along the street, I think, or building C. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's you tap off of that line going to the old rec building if that's enough supply or if we have to come um, up by the other end. Yeah, I don't want to it's, I know maybe this is not the not core, but where's the boiler room in this? Or is that just more detail? Um, would be more detail. There is some there's some space kind of left in there for like circulation and um, um, bathrooms and utility rooms and probably will have to work that in, but um, it, would be, it would be nice if it was in the middle here and we could just kind of branch out from that just to kind of keep the, the lines as short as possible. So that's kind of where that one is. Any questions or comments on this one? All right, this, this option, we tried to keep things a little bit tighter, um, just so we didn't have things, you know, flying out from the building too far. This one, you know, we'll, you know, we'll have to deal with the roof intersections a little bit more. Um, and, uh, you know, this one, we're trying to push things so that you don't get as much parking out in the front here for that retail, um, retail uh, function that you want to have. And, uh, but, you know, it's, I think, you know, this one and the one before this, you know, not bad options, but, you know, they do have, a, you know, when you're looking at the overall program for the building, because there's inefficiencies, because we're using the existing building, that adds to the cost, because there's a higher square footage for the building. 
So this one we, you know, we get the greenhouse with uh, keeping the space as tight to it. We still get southern exposure for that building, but you know there is a possibility that we'll be shut a little bit and keep it this exactly the way it is. Um, this would require relocation of the transformer. As I said before, you know, we're probably looking at just re redoing the entire mechanical electrical and fire protection system for the building. So, you know, even even with it, we're trying to keep this a tight program or tight space configuration, we're going to spend a lot of money on this. To, you know, there's not there's not a huge benefit to keeping that existing you know, Given what it is, which is CMU walls, you know, you know, maybe wood studs. It's not probably not the most uh, energy efficient structure either. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of leads to the last uh, option. <coughs> and these are the costs for this. It's a little bit lower than uh, than the first option, uh, just because the space is a little bit tighter, and we're able to make the square footage a little bit smaller. So, is, are these last the first two options? Does that take down what, what's here, what we saved, or or use it? Okay. So the first two keep options to keep what we keep okay. what is here now. Yeah. Yes, they're up. So the costs are a little bit better here. Um, you know, you still have the additional costs that you know are estimated right now. Maybe we can do better. Maybe we, they might be worse um, until I can get an estimate on it. You know, these are my best guesses. And I don't want to. I don't want to like gloss over. You know, cost because everything is really expensive right now, and uh, I'm hoping I'm guessing right. All right, so this is the um, the other option, which is basically to tear down what's there now, start over, try and keep it as simple as possible. You know, making uh, you know basically it's a rectangle with um, the greenhouse off to one off to one side. We'd have to build that as new also. Um, we may be able to reuse the controls if it makes sense, but um, hard to say right now. So, so this is, has a much simpler uh, circulation system, and I, I think you could probably get what you want. Um, it's, like I said, it's a tighter building, and so we end up with a little bit lower construction costs for the building. Um, there might be a little bit higher demolition costs, obviously, with taking down the rest of the building. And um, but I think that the you know the site costs will probably be comparable with the other two, and the other costs would as well. So I mean that that's kind of where it is right now. Um, I guess I I need a little bit of direction on you know what you think, you know, and Rick, you know, I know you've been through building projects like this a million times, so, you know, any, any input on costs or really difficult to talk about it. Well, I'm not really in touch with today's costs and all the hours. No, I'm sure, yeah. Um, but, but I'm sure you experienced the uh, price hikes in your, oh, yeah. and during your career. Well, it's, it's, it's a whole new world, obviously, yeah, since when I was in business. Kevin, uh, just one question. You answered on option one and two, the ramp. I was trying to figure out how we would do this with the change elevation. Yeah. Option three, if you went with option three, is there a ramp? It's not in one of the bullets. Yeah, there, there would be a ramp. We'd have all this at elevation. one height. We just, you know, kind of, this, this side would have to build it out above the grade a little bit. Um, so when we show a door here, you know, there would have to be something you know, where that door would exit out on to, to get to a normal grade level or a stair down to the lower level. Yeah, so it simplifies <coughs> going in that way as well. In option, the footprint of option two, if we were able to move with a full demo and build almost the footprint of option two, you'd see that price go down, what you would suspect? Price go down? Yeah, you have it at 
would you also, <laughs> similar to the third option, would you see the overall construction I, I go think, down and then? Well, the benefit to this one is that real simple rectangle space. <coughs> that basically, we create a single gable yep. roof structure. You know, maybe we get a metal building to work, you know, to enclose this. So not necessarily, even though it would be new? Correct. Yeah, yeah just because the, the, the foundation walls are more complicated, and uh, you know, just the building sure. circulation wouldn't be quite as efficient. That's a thousand square feet less, yet we're getting the same same program. Yeah. I'd love to hear from you two. My initial, I had just a few hours to look at the industry option, and I, my initial thoughts were I like one and two. Uh, I like components of one and two. I guess overall, I kind of like I was leaning towards option two. Uh, I'm thinking of the, the use of the space in loud slash dirty space versus quiet and clean space. And I, I really like the concept that the three classes are relatively together and separate from the garage noisy space. I kind of like that concept. Uh, I liked option one in that almost the garage space could have been, hypothetically, could be a separate building. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're showing indoor circulation just because that's kind of what you expect in New England. But, you know, it could be um, a covered walkway or, you know, even a shielded walkway as well. And option two, option two would allow the restrooms in your office space to be close to the classrooms. Could we pull the garage space out like we have in option one? Yes. Like a high yeah. yeah. I, I like what you said, Andy, about the, the two different spaces from my perspective. I mean, if we were going to drill down into where things are located, I think I'd want the office space more centrally located near the front door, almost as a, to be able to get to either space, any of the spaces quickly and for, for command and control. But. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we can take option three and make that happen yep. within within a simpler building and gain the, the cost savings of doing a simpler structure, plus you get a lower operating cost because yeah. you know, we get a much more efficient system building. You know, I think that we just laid out the spaces just to, you know, fit it and, yep. you know, this is kind of the minimum square footage that we can get with that particular program. Now we can we can divide it up in a better way to meet the functionality that we're looking for. And what is this space? Is this just empty lobby it's a, space? It's or? an entrance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we could even minimize that, minimize that adjust yeah. as it needed. It could be minimized and or you know create a, a hallway out the back because I know there's probably a, a strong need for a connection through. I like the retail and the head house and the greenhouse on one side. It's it, you almost making three components. You know, you can have the greenhouse, head house, retail, classrooms, clean space, dirty space. And just thinking of the future and expansion with the amount of more students we're going to bring out, and when we're in this looking at this whole big picture. I like three because it is going to help carry that load of more people in. And, and even though you're still continuing that space the best you can, I think for the future we need to look at modernization a little bit uh, and still try to contain costs. But I like I like the way you made that come around. Yeah, I mean, we also wanted to consider expandability for this building. Um, I think that, uh, you know, because we're such, in such a limited space, we don't get a lot of opportunity to do that. But, you know, this does have some space to grow out into. You have to change the site around a little bit. And, you know, because we're moving, we're building out into the, into the hill on the uh, east side here, you know, possibly we could put in a basement that could contain other classrooms. But, you know, they'd be separated and they wouldn't have that same vertical connection that yeah. you need in a modern building. I don't know how much parking we need for retail space. I don't envision a lot of cars coming and going, but 
I, I'd like to see the, the idea of an outdoor project space similar to plumbing, um, where you can do patios and things. So I don't know if some of that could be repurposed. It appears like, I know it's not the scale, but we would gain a lot by that storage bar and leaving the way you have option three laid out, and that, that might have the opportunity for more outdoor pro dedicated outdoor <coughs> project space that might have a minimum cost. Plumbing has a giant fake foundation sand that they do a lot of digging and, and laying a pipe in as if it was, you know, a uh, uh, pipe in, in concrete or hurricane. So, okay. but I don't know if it's something similar to be replicated. Yeah, I mean, we, we try not to touch the roadways as much as we could here, just to yeah. you know avoid additional costs. But you know, this road could be straightened out. This could be made into a, a kind of a, a workspace there. You know, this. I don't know if the parking for the retail. Obviously, that would be ideal, um, having it right here. But you know, we can move that as well. Um, you know, this area is hard just because it's down. It's like 10 feet of el elevation change between the, the floor height and what the grade would be down the hill. Yeah. I think there's opportunities, you know, especially on, on the back side here for uh, moving that road. You just have to kind of modify like how you use the, the, the land right now. Well, in terms of cost, um, option three is the cheapest, right? Option three is still yeah. most expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Andy, I appreciate your uh, thoughts. Andy and I met earlier today and talking about isolating the garage from this. But anytime we create a separate structure, we're going to increase more cost due to the exterior walls and, and that. Um, a concern earlier with option three was the, the garage being close to the classroom spaces. So if we move forward into some sense of option three, we want to do some sound attenuation in some sort. Um, any thoughts there? I think that we could separate them pretty easily, you know. But like I was saying earlier, I think that there's a probably a need to have a front to back, you know, passageway, um, and we could, you know, we could, you know, bring that entrance, you know, narrow it a little bit from what it is now, bring it through where that large classroom is, and kind of modify the plan a little bit to make that work, creating that separation within the plan. Do you think option three gives you the opportunity for four classrooms? I think. For four classrooms, yeah, um, based on I think we entrance could, space or availability, but maybe not that much more cost. Uh, yes. Mark, you look like you have something to say. Well, I mean, I was thinking. For us, um, the closeness of the classrooms and the garages are not going to be really be an issue sound-wise, because we're not going to be in the classrooms and in the garage at the same time, mostly. You know, we'll we'll okay. do our related stuff, and then um, then we would be using the garages or something. I mean, on three, you could theoretically, if you were to switch the work project repair and the large <laughs> classroom, that moves one of the garage spaces away from the classrooms. So the classrooms are at the far end. That would help a little. But I don't see a huge need to. I mean, I understand that the cleanliness and the noise and stuff from the others, it does make more sense. Um, I don't think it would be as big of an issue as. Yeah, I mean, the, the only caveat would be if we were able to get in three or four right. classrooms, there might be other programs that utilize the classroom space. Correct. And then I, I know it's conceptual, but shift, yeah. but the head house in three is mighty small compared to what it should be. I, I think you know these are just diagrams well, right. that we can manipulate to uh, right. you know to make things meet your needs better. Right. 
three effective parking points. I think that half the reason why the head house is relatively small in three is incorporating the hallway that divides the retail and head house. But hypothetically, that could be one open space, correct? You could. Get rid of the hallway. Now you have the open space. How you subdivide the open space into a retail versus head house may give you more flexibility. I think some schools have used like a double-sided flower cooler as the divider, so that makes sense. and it makes a visual barrier between the two. That's not a wall that you have to build. Yeah, I think as long as we have the egresses in the right place, then we could make that up one space. So three gives us the most possibilities for the best cost. Best building, best operating costs. Additional demo costs. Yeah, and it's also the less square footage. But you get a new greenhouse out of it. Right? Yes. Is there, is there any potential of dismantling existing? Moving. It's a steel structure. You just take it off the foundation and put it back down. It's a new foundation. It's a giant erector set. It's not. I would agree. Uh, I mean, someone who would have to move would probably speak better than I could about it. But I'm yeah. assuming we're, we're including the greenhouse square footage in the cost, right? That's all for uh, the square footage, right? Yeah. yeah. So it would be a bit of a savings if we're able to save the existing greenhouse unit. Maybe. Whenever you have to take something apart, be careful with it. Let's take a job. Go on. No, I would just put a big hook on it and pick it up. <laughs> just put it over there. I'll call the guy. We had a guy come in and drop it first. I'll ask Joe what he's going to work on. Just give us a pretty good explanation. Yeah, three, I, I guess I'm curious back to the elevation. Mark, you had a, I think a good idea to just plop in the large classroom in that or project space. But just the, the elevation, those would have to be on the ground elevation to, so you can bring your it's like big garage door. Mm. How does that compare to the classrooms on this front wall? Well, the closer the garages are to the greenhouse, the more they are matching the system. It's there now. Correct. The further you go, <coughs> the you go the east, have to yeah. get down. Yeah. Right, so you wouldn't have to worry about if the classroom's at the far end, because you don't have to have to get equipment out. Yeah, I mean, um, if we are down the hill a bit, you know, we can build a retaining wall, you know, to bring the grade up there a little bit. So if we build, if, if this, say this was all one level without, that means you're built, we have to build up above, but that would give us access storage, maybe that can only be access from outside the building, so you have to get out and go around. Could you have... A basement, under the a basement storage underneath the classroom. Say the classrooms were in that, that far corner. Uh, as it is, yeah. if you built it at one level, right? Then that means as it goes down, we've gained. Do we gain some sort of basement storage? Uh, just that end of the. Yeah, it's not that free. That could be accessed around. It's, it's not free, but it, it's, it's a, you know, and it could be something that you build out later, too, you know, if you, if you did the, the insulation right. Yeah, but yeah. so maybe it could be incorporated and then. Yeah, because if you pour it in the concrete. Because you, know, so you, you are going to lose storage by taking that barn down. Oh, absolutely. Right. So, I mean, even if it was 10 feet deep. The seasonal storage. You know, you could, we could put all of our tools in there. Um, you know, nothing that major that requires to be inside or needs heat or anything yeah, All like the that. seasonal stuff that right. you rotate through. Right. You access that basement through a body of garage doors. The garage doors would be at ground elevation. Your, your shop space, the garage mm -hmm. space on the back end, has to be down on the ground so you can drive tractors in. Right. But then the front of the building, where right now classroom one and classroom two are, could be higher, which gives you that basement elevation. Right. Well, this this would all be at one one. Right. If you made that all at one level, we just we're just talking it. off the, the left end there. <laughs> So off the left end where the ground slopes down, if you had an entry into like a basement space, 
for storage. Maybe, maybe I'm struggling. So if that's all one floor, I understand. Sure, yeah, what we're seeing is all one floor. Then the, the right. Uh, you know, a basement level storage Correct. space. So there's two garages that are facing the back. Yep. In order to be on the same elevation as the head house, greenhouse, and everything, we're going to be off the ground. That ground drops. That's yeah. what we have to build the ground up. Right. Or we don't build the ground up. That remains one elevation, but as the ground drops, Underneath classroom <coughs> one and two, is you actually have space that is technically above ground that could become your basement that you access from your garage because the garage. So maybe the garage floor and the classroom floor is two different elevations. If we did that, then there'd have to be ramps inside the building, which you know, would we'd have to work on. We'd have to take a look at that to see if it would lose space because of so that. So either adding a ramp inside or we're raising up the ground outside. Yes. We can take a closer look at the elevations to see what they are. I mean, I think it may be a little bit lower, you know, in this area, but it does drop off once you get down into this area. And similar to the space, when we went to Vermont to check out that tech school, that was a similar concept. The garage was like a lower elevation. You came in and went down the stairs into the garage. Yeah. And then, but there could be, a, it, at the egress there, we could build an out, a ramp outside that allows access up and down instead of stairs. Yes, I mean, you need the accessibility inside yep. the building. Oh. Right, but if I'm saying if it's at one level, yeah. then the ramp that can be outside that allows access in versus stairs. Yeah, I, I think that we can, we can look at it and yeah. see how best it works out. Because, I mean, if we can avoid ramps, that would be good. Or even four level changes just because they start complicating things. But, you know, it would be nice if we could like keep, you know, classroom areas at a certain structural height and we're able to get a bigger structural height for those garage spaces. You know, I mean, we can look at that further and you know it seems like a good idea to try to do that to um, work with the grade so we're not Manipulating it too much, right? Yeah, significant. Because option three is gonna, with what I think, is what you're saying. Option three, where you have the back garages, there's gonna be a significant elevation change that we're gonna have to build up. I'm saying don't build it up. That's gonna gain you basement space underneath class one, one and two. Right. That you gain access to through your garage space. Right. So the interior building is all one elevation, is all, but your garages would have to be lower to match the grade. Otherwise, we're building, as you said, we have to build up the grade. Yeah, because that, that, that would just road. that would just give us higher ceilings in the garages. Exactly, which is what you want. Correct. Right. So you'd have to do ramps similar to what we used to have stairs going into that garage. Right. It was like a six foot drop. Mm -hmm. so you have to gain access to the garage from the inside. Right. He was saying we have to have an indoor ramp for accessibility. You can't have people going out and going in a back entrance. It has to be equitable. Accessibility, they're not, they're not favored. It's kind of like the last solution. Right. So if we can do it another way, so our ramp sounds better for a regular elevator. <laughs> well, we don't want the regular elevator. <laughs> right. The ramp. If you're only going six feet, we don't want to put a right. full elevator. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. That the wheelchair <clears> might, might, if that was feasible. But it sounds like a ramp is what we would have to go. Yeah. And we can take this back and. Take another, another ramp set. Accommodation and everybody can use, and you're not double, you're not doubling space. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things 
you asked about our, our thoughts. If you were to um, keep the indoor practice space close to a classroom, because what we use right now is the front classroom of the building and the door that's adjacent to where kids go and work in sandboxes in the winter. It's ideal for a teacher and students for that flow and management back and forth. So this last design you have where the classroom is <clears throat> close to the project space, you know, across the hall, that allows that like supervision and flow to still kind of happen. So even if you like switch the large classroom and put it on the corner and move the project space close to the greenhouse so that elevation isn't as much of a change, it would still allow for a classroom to access <coughs> in one of those larger spaces. So that was kind of handy with a tiny building as you you were very close to kids. Um, which makes it helpful. I think the only thing is if you switch the project space in the large classroom, we now lose the underground, the storage under the smaller classrooms. Well, no, it could be under all the classrooms. You just have to access it from outside. It would be a larger base. I assume it would be easier. I think it's cheaper to have a classroom above a basement than a floor that's got to support heavy equipment. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I think if you. Back to the concept drawings, if, if we're looking at three and we're all in favor of it, we like the idea of a new complete building if we can afford it. I think the clustering, to your point earlier, we can cluster things how we want them. So if you wanted three classrooms sort of wrapped around a pride indoor project space, repair space, I think that we, you know, we might be able to make that work on a corner and then add that in. And then you have the, you know, the, the garages and the other things and then that moves over to the next space, which is the greenhouse and the retail and the head house. You almost create that that cluster of, of activities that you want. Because to your point, James, it, it, once we go to this rectangle, it, it's not going to be like it was where you're close to everything. <clears throat> We're going to have to pick what makes the most sense to right. be close to at a time. But we would have flexibility of clustering certain things. Yeah, this floor plan was. And then uh, I think the other thing that I want here to get us going. show us square footage and that we could fit it into the space. The, the other thing would be, in my head, um, would it, how feasible would it be to take the office, put it kind of vertically between the two smaller classrooms, slide the classroom two over and put the two bathrooms into the entry? Yeah. That way, you know, we can be in the office, we can look into the classrooms, you know, so I could, you know, I could almost keep an eye, if I had to, on both classrooms, you know, if it came down to that. And if, if you did that, Mark, <coughs> you could, the clustering, yeah, you could have classroom, office, classroom, and then on the other corner where the project space is, you could have the large classroom, mm -hmm. and then directly across from your office and classroom two could be the project space repair space, mm -hmm. shifts your tool cribs over the two bay garage right. and the... Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that would make it, keep it a little separate for cleanliness and noise, but also allows better observation of everything. What is that storage, Kevin? To the right of the entry, it's two, two letters in storage. Headhouse. Headhouse storage. storage. And then you'd have the main garage, two bay garage, would be right next to the head house and greenhouse. Mm -hmm. That's a higher Easier elevation. Higher elevation. Right. <clears throat> but a lower elevation in that project and repair bay shop, I mean, that's probably where you would want your climbing. Mm -hmm. So a higher roof right. would make more sense. Right. So, I mean, and if we were to. Where the two bay garage, as you said, that slid to the left, and that's still set down for elevation. We'll have that. That could be like the project one to get the higher roof, where the two bay garage would be where the large classroom is. Yeah, because that doesn't require the, <clears throat> as high of an elevation uh, right. ceiling. Yeah, your your tool crib and that would all shift too. Right, that would be between. 
the way it is now, you basically you take take out the large classroom, shift everything to the right towards the greenhouse, and put the classroom in on the left. Yeah. Because I think that would give us everything that we're all. Yeah, it would give you the three classrooms and the project and right. climbing space and all that. Storage Close underneath the classroom two, and then. Um, <coughs> The three classrooms in the project place, yeah. the climbing all clustered, and then right. the, the repair and garage and all that clustered. Right. Okay. Does the two bay garage solve? Go ahead. Tim's, Tim's request early on, which was a space for large equipment to be fixed on campus that we were going to need. I don't think that this addresses that, though. Well, what I was going to say is what I'm hearing is we kind of settling on this footprint and just moving space around. Don't necessarily know how the elevation is going to work in the basement or not, but these costs, uh, what were you thinking for uh, building construction type, Kevin? This uh, metal building? Um, that would be the best, yes. I would so, think that'd be the most cost effective. Metal stud sheet rock um, on a metal building, maybe with a So I'm looking looking at this this let's work with the, the four fifty at five point one essentially and you got these add on costs. We're 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 gonna be up around six in round numbers. Is that something we can pull off? Right now <clears throat> based on the insurance settlements that we have both the structure and the equipment on the 2.1 skills, 2.1 million dollar skills capital grant that we did receive, uh, we can allocate about 600,000 of that towards uh, the animal science renovations, which allows us to use a 600,000 for tuition revolving, along with approximately 39,000 of cash donations that we received, and then fingers and toes and hair crossed uh, that we received a $5 million capital, uh, skills capital grant that is being written this week by Joe and Melanie. We'll receive word in December if we receive that grant. If we do, that's about three and a half million that we can apply to the uh, construction. If you add all those numbers up, we're about 5.4 million. Uh, but again, that has to, that means we're not buying any tools or equipment out of the insurance, which I think is doing pretty well right now with, with the grants. Um, but it also means paying Kevin's firm right now for this work. Uh, the demolition has already occurred, uh, plus all the other costs that Kevin has already outlined. Right. So, uh, it's tight. It's probably too tight, honestly. Well, that's that's what's what's going around in my head. It's um, <clears throat> we need to. Uh, I don't know. We've been pretty creative to date in terms of coming up with resources and money and shifting around ideas and, and spaces and this seems to be the direction we need to go in. But um, I would be comfortable if we're looking at six million ballpark. <clears throat> and that's close to a million most likely it's probably about a million dollars short at the end of the day. Yeah. Andy, what's the amount of money that's still parked uh, Joe Comerford trying to get out of that budget. 225000 Which, honestly, I don't see happening. Yeah. Uh, I, I just... In talking to the lobbyist that Bob has hired that's working on that particular bond bill, I like don't count on it. Uh, if it comes through, great. But I guess one question for the full board would be if we're looking at close to a million dollars, what does that look like internally from the tuition revolving? What does that look like for a small bond using the cell tower as potential revenue to help pay out the bond? We can't get much smaller. I mean, from a couple months ago when we were looking at how many square footage of the building we were initially looking at, we have scaled this down a lot. Um, no, we, from what we were at 31, at, I think, initially. <laughs> so we've come a long ways. Uh, <laughs> The only addition, I believe, team, please correct me if I'm wrong, the only addition that we're seeing in this particular conceptual drawing versus what you two had is another classroom, correct? correct? For me to stand here to say, 
let's get rid of that third classroom. I don't think it would be wise education. I, I no. really do think no. we need that third classroom. No. Um, need instructional space. Absolutely. Okay. Um, well, for the sake of today's meeting, where do we go from here? I mean, we seem to have come to the conclusion this is what we'd like to do, at least in my opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, um, and how do we get there? So we need to go back to the, the budget numbers or and I, I was working with the 450. Um, I was doing that, be, trying to be a realist in, in what we potentially are facing. Um, well, what are costs running today? I, I assume this is accurate information, 350, 450, with today's school construction costs? I was thinking about, you know, it's, it's probably not the most ideal construction for a high school building, um, but you know it's it's something that's going to get you a building, and we'll try and make it as durable as we can with you know lesser cost material. What is the um, when you're talking about steel or metal building? Yeah. What's the frame work going to be? It's a um, well, it can be wood. That wouldn't be the greatest. It'd right. be nice if it was non-combustible. You know, just I mean, is it, is it avoid be like any steel issues. Steel that, that would support a fair amount of weight. For what purpose? Students climbing. Yeah, I mean, we could build that in. You know, with metal buildings, you have the ability. Right. To build I, I didn't in. know if like the frame would go up is going to be a steel gird or like frame that you didn't putting building building material on. Yeah. And if that was the case, that would help us a little bit in. What we want to do with the climbing is you can add to that without increasing yeah, we, the cost so much. If we get the grant, we have that in as a separate. Oh, okay. A well, separate, I mean, yeah, structure. We have it in as a separate equipment. We have okay. it listed as equipment. Uh, and the one who built um, Bristol's is actually the same company in Northampton. Oh. So um, they gave us a, a cost estimate, but there would be additional costs if we just did the same amount of steel and size as Bristol. So if we change the design a little, mm -hmm. um, but we, we we have that in the grant as a separate structure. Right. Well, so it's not, it wouldn't be part of the construction cost. No, I know, but if they if we if they have the, the frame for like the project space is, has steel beams, we could probably add to that without maybe reducing the cost a little bit without making it too expensive. No, I'm not talking about the building. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying we could no, I, I it to that so to make it work to what we need. It would just shift. You would shift the cost away from what we might be able to pay for in the grant into what has to come out of the construction cost, and I would assume that you have to. That area is going to have to be engineered differently right. because of the different use. I love that. I mean, it's not. You're just talking about the weight of the steel. The rest of it would be negligible. Right. I didn't know if that would make it cheaper for the structure to get both in. Yeah, but it's two pots of money, so mm. we decrease one pot of money just to, so to speak. I was going to ask, uh, if the shell is up, how much student labor could be used for some interior framing and electrical work? Is that even possible in such a scale of a project? buildings that students build. I'm sure they're not 11,000 square feet per building, but they're a decent size to hold the Chapter 74 program. Right? They weren't that big. I mean, maybe double the White House down there. I mean, just with, with public construction projects, you know, I don't, contractors don't like to mix in, in you know, they like to kind of get. You know, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point, Kevin. It's uh, about subdivided contractors, and uh, they want to get in and out and make it as efficient as possible, so when you start complicating it, it 
I want to think it just makes their costs go up. What? Well, then, then there's the option we get this this metal building structure built and we go in and outfit it. That's, 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 if, if the foundation we, we, get we get the building, we get the structure the built, we take it from there. It's the same concept that we're having with the big barn. What is the timeline for a building this size with the demo of the existing and then to completion if it was all done? A year, maybe a little bit more. No. 12 to 18 yeah. months? Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking, <clears throat> you know, obviously having to find a new home and deal with that, what does that window actually look like? I don't know if our programs can get it done in 12 to 18 months. Be a lot longer. Thrown out in years. No, I know, I know. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I want to be realistic too. Yeah, exactly. We got to be a realist about this, and that's what we're here for. Um, and, um, that being said, if there if there was a way to save cost by having one areas areas of it not completed, or that could be worked on, maybe that's <clears throat> a possibility. But it would delay the full use of the building. Yeah. Starts to get complicated. So, Kevin, you mentioned trying to rehab an existing building. We left the greenhouse, tore down the existing headhouse because it's just a wood structure on a slab. Is there any benefit to having the slab there to build a structure on to connect with the existing greenhouse? Or is that just too complicated? You're talking about the greenhouse foundation. So the current greenhouse and then the room that's currently attached, we call the headhouse. That's just a wood structure, a wood yeah. frame structure built on to a slab. If that wood frame structure was gone, then that slab became part of the foundation of the new building. Is that beneficial at all? Uh, is that just not a piece we would have to like modify the building to like fit onto that foundation. Yeah, well, yeah. So. I don't think don't there's think really it. any any cost savings there. Okay. I was just curious. Plus, I think it's the slab slopes um, to drains and things like that. So it would it would take work to get it. Okay. Even if it suited the building. Okay. Um, anything more to add, anybody? And then, what's our next step? Um, I see trying to work with this footprint and just shifting space around to better suit our needs and trying to fine tune our our vision and um, maybe yeah. Uh, Can we give Kevin a list of some of our thoughts around option three? You guys can. Yeah, Shelby's been taking notes. And uh, I think you've heard everything that you heard. Only question out there. I'd have. And, but, you know, I understand we're trying to, you know, create a little bit of maybe separation, you know, seem to not be as important as, you know, but I, I still think that there's a certain way to lay out the building that would make it function best for everybody mm -hmm. in the building. Um, Want to try and move around spaces so that we're working with the grades as much as we can. Um, and make some kind of under reduced basement level storage space work under the building that would be helpful. I mean, only the question would be back to the elevation and the grade work. I think the parking is not the big priority. I know it may have to require you working at back road, but could we shift the entire structure closer to this intersection? If we're moving the greenhouse, anyways. <coughs> Does that make life easier? And we have flexibility to move any of the roads right. that are dirt. Uh, yeah, that would help with the grades. So all, all this on uh, what I'd say the backside, this is all dirt, right? Yep. There's no pavement <coughs> back here. We have flexibility. And then the, across the front is pavement.
so then Kevin and Shelby's task would be to maybe look at the grading closer and see how that's all going to come together and the allocation of space based on what you've heard. And would you, um, do you have enough to move forward in a sense or do you need additional info? You want some more feedback after we're, they walk we're away good. and maybe think about it for a day and feed you more info or yeah, yeah. I mean if, if any questions come up, you know, in the process of reconfiguring the, the spaces here, we'll definitely be in touch. But I think that this has been great. It's good feedback. What do you think for a window of our next meeting? You know, we're running out of October. We're going into November, and we're in December. And right. Yeah. I didn't, run in I didn't show a schedule here because uh, yeah. I didn't. It's not that it's not important, but I want to kind of get through this meeting to kind of see where right, we're at. Right. Um, oh, no. <clears throat> and so next meeting we'll have a schedule, kind of a, a re revised schedule to, to work with. And I'm, you know, when is your next opportunity to meet? The next board meeting is Tuesday, November fifteenth. And we're trying to dovetail this all together to uh, um, make it simpler to schedule meetings. I think this works great, the three and the five. Yep. You too, Mr. Kaline? Yes, sir. 15th yeah. work? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You want to say the 15th day meetings? That work you kept up? Free and clear. Okay. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have a contractual agreement or purchase order with you guys. And how are we doing with, with our budget? I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, trying to be a realist, Kevin. No, it, you know, we. Uh, I think are required to like stay within a certain budget limit. Yeah, you know, the thirty thousand is something that we are required by state law to stay under. So it's it, you know working with well, I mean, if we're not working with the existing building, that kind of keeps it a little bit simpler. And so we're trying to stay on the same path, but there have been some wrinkles in the pathway. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not asking more money, but maybe we can modify the process going, you know, through the rest of the way. What are, what are we trying to get out of this as a final product, I guess? You know, because I, what I was um, imagining when we wrote the initial proposal was that we'd have floor plans, elevations, um, possibly a rendering of the building to kind of act as marketing material. Um, what are, what are your thoughts on, on that? Good question. Um, let's put it out to the group. Um, I hadn't, well, well, I actually have been thinking about that and, and where, where are we going with this? And, and um, obviously, as you know, as we move forward, we'd have to put this out for competitive architectural design proposals, blah, 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 you know the drill. Um, and but here we are um, paying for a service to get doing what exactly what we're doing to get focused to see what we can afford and what we envision and we've had a lot of good dialogue here and um, so what you just said sounds great to me if we can do that within our budget anybody else I so, I would say uh, I'm okay if we don't get that far in the process, quite honestly. I don't know how much fundraising we'll be doing, or we would need to have that rendering to, to try to sell to uh, donors out there. I'm looking at the timeline as well with the grants. For a second, let's just assume that we get this big grant. Uh, that will be awarded in, in December. We've got three fiscal years, correct? But this is fiscal year number one, which is, will be halfway over by the time we get this particular grant. Um, I would like to start and, and we have to write into the grant as soon as possible, really go out to bid for the, the architecture services and so on and so forth, January, February. Um, 
So my feeling was your services, Kevin, were ideal. This is what we needed to see. Like we needed to have a visual for this team uh, so we could discuss and debate this, the, the use of the, of the building, what are we talking about for rough estimates for cost, so, so we can figure out a budget. I think we're very close on a budget. I'm feeling more comfortable today than I have over the last several months. I'm just wondering if you go into great detail under this particular yeah, no, you're good point. You did, valid point. If you win the bid, great. Okay, if you want to be the architect, uh, but if That'd you have to, if you have to not be the the architect that that wins the bid, then that new firm is doing everything you just did, uh, as far as a lot of the design work. And I just wor worried if that's duplicative services. Well, I mean, you wouldn't be doing competitive <coughs> cost. Um, there would be qualifications there. So mm -hmm. you get whoever based on the qualifications that you know best, that best, best met your mm -hmm. needs um, and negotiate costs after that. So, so that, that was one thing. Um, I mean, we are absolutely interested in doing this. So I'm willing to take this a little bit farther than I okay. think. Um, uh, what I you know, think just, uh, Andy's to point. Get what you need. I'm sorry, go ahead. Hey, I mean, you don't need marketing material if you're not trying to sell this for a grant or for Agreed. public, uh, you know, funding of, of, of the project. So, you know, we still do need to get a cost estimate, you know, so hopefully get through another round of board plans, develop some, you know, some simple elevations of what the building could look like, right. and get, a, get, a, get a cost estimate from that. Right. If we were looking for like a proposition two and a half override vote for the city to, to pay for this, I think we definitely need to have all that marketing material. Yep. Um, I just don't see us crossing. We're, we're not we're crossing that them. bridge at this point. Right. So I, I think the team that has to be convinced is this team right here. Are we comfortable with the conceptual design? I think that's been the main focus. I I, I I now agree with what uh, Dr. Lincoln Hooker is saying in regards to that. We don't necessarily need you to go that next step and spend your real spending money on that. Let's focus on on the nuts and bolts and getting a somewhat ballpark cost estimate. And and I would think in the next couple meetings we're there. Anybody agree, disagree? Okay. I want February to be less conceptual. January, February to be less conceptual in actual decision making and sounds break, great. Possible to break ground with the ideal. That'd be my hope. Um, on what you just said a little while ago about fundraising, uh, I think we need to have a subcommittee mm -hmm. in regards to just that focus and we're going to incorporate B building, incorporate this problem. Uh, if we're going to raise money. Uh, we got to put the whole thing together because I don't want to do a piecemeal because you know you get one bite of the apple. And uh, so, but you and I can talk about that as well. Okay. So, in, in advance of like some of the planning for the classrooms and the offices, you know, it would be great if you guys could put together a wish list of, of um, teaching educational, you know, uh, equipment, uh, whiteboards, whiteboards, you know, cabinets, sinks, anything like that, if you could put together a list of what ideally you would want in these classrooms, that would be really helpful. I can guess, but but if we if we can try and, uh, you know, make it efficient in what's in the classrooms, um, you know, even even lighting. You know, what do you need for lighting? You want LEDs on dimmers. Uh, you want, you know, a smart a, a screen like this in every classroom, or do you can you get away with something a little bit less? Well, we had chalkboards before, so we're getting. It. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't want chalkboards. No, <laughs> no he likes chalkboards. <laughs> in the 1970s paneling on the wall. No. Well, that was. Yeah, can you do something with Naughty Pine somewhere? No. Kind of, kind of Maybe stuff. your classroom, but not mine. <laughs> rustic, rustic chicken. All right. 
So when you're talking about equipment, whiteboards, and classroom materials, are you talking about that being embedded in the cost? Uh, we have, what, what's the purpose if, of asking if, um, for that? Even if they're not in the cost, we still need to prepare for them, and I want to make sure that we're describing the outlets and the data lines and whatever in a way that yeah, so we lets the cost estimator know what we're, what we're after. For, for his MEP cost estimates, and what you're referring to could be considered what they call furnishings and equipment, and that could maybe come out of our construction budget, and we'd have to pay for that so elsewhere. But we need to have the infrastructure to run. So the grant, right. we're talking right. about the grant, right? Yeah. Okay, so what we're referring to is with this big grant, of the five million, one and a half million is for equipment, three and a half million is for the facility upgrades. In that one and a half million piece of pie, some of that are the, I think you provided some of the quotes on tables, the table, desks, desks desk, all right. Right. Yeah. right. So we have, hopefully have to come out of the grant. Right. Three three classrooms. Classrooms. But you'll need to have details of what we're asking for so you can sort of design the path. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, like, so if, if the you have the list, there, we can't use it. <laughs> right. 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 So, the so list we have the you provided, Melanie. So between one of you, if we can get that list, we can send it off to you. And then you just see what we're asking for for the grant. Mm -hmm. We would have to add to that because he said a couple, keyed in on a couple things for teaching. Like in the head house, I would want a if we can fit it a three bay, a three sink, stainless steel with right. size yeah, for yeah, and processing yeah. produce and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, there's some things that we would want in there that you would need to know about. Yeah. But like Kevin said, he could pass <coughs> if he didn't get right. that info, but Correct. it would be better if he had the info. He now knows at least one. <laughs> yeah. And so we, you know, we can still, you know, if you put together a list, we can start putting together a, a space, a right. space program, right. and that helps to kind of build the information that we can give for the cost estimator so, and, and whoever the designer is, hopefully. All right, let's... Uh, Let's release Kevin and his associates, Shelby. Uh, I had some more uh, agenda items for our subcommittee that wasn't just for uh, this building. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Take care, Shelby. Garage waste. Garage waste. If you had any on how these turn space wise. Okay. <laughs> want to keep it out of the dusty area. I was talking about the simulators. We'll have to figure out the footprint for those. And I think, was it you that we talked, that I talked with about having a separate space behind a class with doors? Yeah, it's almost like a lab space yeah. that they have in uh, English. Like in, um, Thank you. Right. Thank you. Like a language classroom. Hey, Tim. No, you're right. Well, it's almost like her, her office. Tim, right. Tim. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Right there. Can yeah. you circle back? Yeah, yeah. I just got to ask one question. All right. right. Talk about what yeah. 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 Okay. Um. Property subcommittee, yes, this is our, one of our, obviously our top focus is this horticulture <coughs> project, but we also have a lot of property and a lot of issues and a lot of moving parts. And I'd like to keep all those things on the radar and not let them slip through due to the fact we've got bigger fish to fry in a sense. Um, I met with Andy earlier, going over things and getting up to date, and I tried to do this. Well, I hadn't did it, done it since a month ago, but I'd like to do it every couple of weeks just to keep fresh with things. Um, we talked some about the animal science building progress, and uh, was um, brought up to date. Interior walls are demoed. Um, Tim's been working with Dietz Architects for some working drawings. Hopefully, classrooms ready for uh, by February. Um, vision to create animal companion programs still on the radar. And then we have the issue with the nursery pig barn space. Tim recommends tearing down and build metal building and students' outfit. And uh, so a couple, I can, a couple updates since that you know. Oh, great! So. Um, I think that's that one, so why don't you jump in, sir? So we had a 
and property, you know, we had a renovation planning meeting, whatever, we, too many months. Uh, we met with Tim, we met with Chad, and uh, Tim will be prepared to have material available this coming Monday for the uh, framing of the walls and the new uh, Working with Chad on what that would look like. So that's the update there. The update on the hay barn slash nursery barn, uh, the slab, Rick and I spoke about the side yeah. 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 about that. It looks like okay. a recommendation right. that it is not suitable yeah. 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 on the current slab. So we'll probably have to pull the slab out and start over. Okay. That was that update that we talked about. All right. So, um, so that's well in the works. And also, uh, on the radar. Um, then we talked about what's coined, and this is an old term, I'm understanding, the Apple storage area, which the automotive shop storage is above. Um, floor joists need replacement, bits received, low bit of the decam certificate expired. So there's, there's a little, I, I'd have to go back and look at it. Did it expire the day after? We opened the bids, but the high bidder brought in the attorney general's office because um, he's saying you can't accept it. Now. You have to throw out the little bidder. So the attorney, so there was a lot of back and forth, but it looks like we're going to have to, we would have to accept the high bidder forty thousand more on top of what was already a hundred thousand more than we estimated. So at this point, we can. We have to have Joe Cook from the city say, okay, you can throw out the bids, write the, I'd have to have him write the letter, and we're either be advertised again. Right. And I think we would be advertised as a, the same construction project, but put it in four different alternate bids. You know, first alternate bid is fix the building and make it structurally safe for the students and storage. And then the second alternate would be do the roof over, third would be do the siding over, and the fourth would be and no. who's the design professional handling this process? Uh, Roy Brown. Roy, okay. So, so you had that conversation with him about the alternate? I, not with Roy. I had, I had, uh, I, read, I wrote an email the other night to Joe Cook and uh, Crystal. I, I'm sure Roy would, I mean, what, what that alternate is going to do is protect us on how much money we can spend. We only have so much. Mm -hmm. And so we can take what's mostly important and then kind of work out So. Way has the attorney general ruled that the low bidder is is not um, I, you know, qualified I, at this point? This there's an argument because he had submitted his renewal application to the state August fourth. It's written right on his DCAM application, and the state hasn't done anything with it. So it's been sitting there, and they I so guess they, they just call around contract or call people up and, and do referrals, right? Or just uh, well, they, they have to process it and recertify him, but if his certificate was active or in effect during the day of the bid, he, he should be okay. If it expired after the bid, that doesn't matter. I mean, he was he was certified right. so at the day of the bid. The way I read that email, it sounded like the Attorney General's office at first said, no, you have to throw that out. And then later on, it sounded like you can keep it. Was kind of, so I, I so it's up to us so to call DCAM and see where he is exactly because he's not on the list. If you look for his number, you don't see him on the DCAM list. All right. So so who's going to take care? Is Joe working on that? To, Tomorrow we're to going to talk about it. Shake that out and yeah. figure out which direction we're going in. Right. We're going to create this. Put it back out to bid with whatever number of alternates yeah. and so forth and so on. Yeah. We just, have to, we just have to make sure we don't just throw it out and someone can come back at us right. with a lawsuit. No, absolutely. So uh, he's going to decide that. Um, and then as far as funds work, we, we should blow on all I mean, what, are, what are we talking for uh, size of project, Tim? The size? The dollar, dollar, dollar value. Um, I think the, the high bid was 254000 And it started out at 150000 That was the estimate. So Roy's estimate when he advertised it was one. No, no. When, when I asked for funds, when we originally went out and asked the city for capital money, I think we were, we we're looking at the buildings, and I, that's what I asked. I need to know. I need a number to ask the city, and that's what it was at the time. All right. But that was like 
right before COVID hit, and everything kind of stopped. People got sick. Everything went away. Well and all right, so this this has been in the works for a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A couple of years. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bert's pits. Bert Pitts greenhouse reskinned, being used as uh, storage. storage right now because the barn roof leaks so bad. So um, we brought in all the hay we could put in there, and I, I tried to get the carpentry teachers to do that as a project for the kids, as we have most of the material. Um, but they're, they're <coughs> having enough work. I think we're gonna just poke away at it. So the reskinned portions closer to the road. That building set back. What? Type of structure is it? So that used to be the old uh, hospital dairy farm. So it's a cinder block, three-sided wall building, and then the cows just ran in. So that's where we keep all our, our round bales and, and farm equipment and hay equipment. Okay. And what's the roof structure? Uh, just a corrugated. No, that's what I thought. Yeah. And so all the nails are pulling out. We went up and resealed them, and they just keep moving. It just keeps leaking. So I think that must that is the original roof. So is this something we're going to try to repair in house? We we already started. The guy started put, building the wall on the end of it, the building because that that wall that cinder block part had fallen off years ago. So we seal up the one end. Say the guys, your your crew, the, the farm, farm tax, the farm, crew, yeah. the farm yeah. crew. Okay. And is that um, so? What what's what's the goal there? Get this done. By the end of the year, type of, or is it a filler when you it, get it, to it? Filler. I mean, I, I still think it'd be a great job for the kids because you don't have to do the whole roof at one. They can go down 50 feet, stop, and we'll tarp, we'll tarp the scene. But so we're gonna try to fill it in as we can. But I'm not sure. I don't. I don't have. So what does admin think about what Tim just suggested about the kids doing some of the work? Currently, carpentry is dedicated to habitat. We've had some issues and had to pull back one week of habitat for right now. So he only has every other week. They're trying to get that all closed up before winter. So they're not available? Not available. The other group's okay. going to be doing the, the, they're going to be starting the renovation down in the back. Right. So that maybe once that's completed and that's done, uh, may, you know, since it's a filler, yeah. the spring might have a different opportunity for for the carpentry students. All right, so barn, barn building at Bird's Pit roof needs work and you're trying to deal with it as best you can essentially and uh, you're on your own at this point by the sounds of it yeah it's a lower priority project. yeah right yeah. understood okay I'm working on it all right uh, I happen to bring up the Compost operation. I understand that was rather labor intensive. Didn't really work. Couldn't control some of the stuff coming in from outside our our operation, but still being used for our internally generated food scraps. Um, right now, the, pro the process we're just going to take it right out of the kitchens. We haven't started that process yet. Um, we still take the manure. We take all the city leaves that they want to put up there. Um, there's still a pile left to spread on the fields. That's what we do with it now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. It's a tough program to maintain if you take outside uh, sources just because of all the contaminants. Yes. I, I, so when the city still had the dump, it was easy. Just run it up anything else. When you were done on the screen, you could just take all that uh, over and then just throw it right up at the dump free. But now we got to truck it out. It's twenty-five hundred dollars. Uh, 30 yard box to get rid of it. So, so it's, All just, right. it's just the kitchens. Yeah. Culinary and cafeteria right now. Okay. Uh, and our favorite other project, the forestry building up at the VA property, or our property essentially, thanks to Mr. Kaling's dad. That's correct. <laughs> uh, any activity going on at site, or is that just not currently um, running through exploratory stuff? I I take the kids up there to do some tree ID, and but we're not doing anything with uh, equipment 
with the new equipment and this winter when the ground freezes up and we're doing chainsaws, we're going to start ripping out the rest of the overgrown Christmas tree lot and prep for this moving stumps in the spring so that the, the kids will be using the equipment up there. Okay. Um, right now, can it's you just access storage. that room to get in and out with a bus or? Yeah, we, we, uh, we can come up from by across from Scotty's. Right. It's a, a little bumpy. You're yep. going to miss a few rocks here or there, but. Do you want the graded better? Well, well do. It, it would be good for our vehicle to fill well, right. some rocks, you know. <clears throat> I mean, we would put that on the project list. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're trying to, to everybody, um, trying to keep all our properties in focus mm -hmm. and not lose sight of what we have and what we're trying to manage. <clears throat> Uh, I feel, to me, it's important that we keep this sort of stuff on the radar. Um, you know, we have we have a lot of resources, and as Andy mentioned, maybe too many and not a good thing. But we do have them, and we got to figure out what to do with them, or think about maybe getting rid of some of them. I don't know. So it's just Tim, what's your thoughts? I know one time you talked about using bulldozer to. Grade that. Yes, no? Yeah, I think the, the road itself is packed hard enough. You never yeah. get harder, so just bring in some road pack. I think that's something really that the kids can do. Well, what about, what about taking the, the bulldozer? That's, that's our best piece of equipment. I mean, a road grader would probably be better, but I don't think we have one. Um, and taking the crown out and, and you know, scraping the crown, and then it goes into the gully the, yeah, where the just wheels gonna, are. You're just going to pick up boulders. You're just gonna, as you do that, you're just gonna yeah, yeah. <laughs> uncover boulders. Yeah, we've we've tried that at one point, closer along the field, and it just kept bringing up boulders after boulder and made more of a mess. So your thought is bring up some dense grade, dense pack, whatever that yeah. manufactured blacktop and the millings and stuff, and filling in the low spots. Yep, have ten wheels come in, the kids can grade it, push it back, you know, and uh, and then just that. They'll pack it down just with the driving on it, right? That's <clears throat> something that's feasibly get in on the schedule in the next whatever this school year. Oh, we can we can work on it this school year, and if we're not having to change the grade, you know, we can do that. You know, as long as we get material that doesn't freeze <laughs> in the middle of winter, you know, we can work on it. But then we have one project we're working on here, and then. After that, we can work on the road up there. But if the stuff's up there, once we get the equipment, we can start a little at a time, work chipping away at the road. Okay, is that something you guys can communicate yeah. about okay. and do? And is it okay with admin to? It's all funding, right? Come down to funding. So okay. that would be. Uh, so we get we, we try to get use the road base that Power Paving makes mm -hmm. because it packs pretty hard. And but their their site will shut down. Where do you get that in East, East Hampton? Hampton? Yeah. East Hampton plant? Yeah. yeah. But, but that plant will shut down for coming up maybe next month. And then I don't know if we can get it out of Sunderland, but then the trucking just gets ramped out, spiked up more. But we can definitely do it. So do you have the truck to go get the material? They would deliver. Yeah. So you have the delivery cost. Yeah. And if you went to Sunderland, what, Warner Brothers? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just getting these issues out there and seeing what we can do about them. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be funded to do it all at once. I mean, no. did, just to get down from the top of that first hill corner right, is huge. That's, that's, the, that's the probably the worst section. Yeah. yeah. And you have some stuff there, or yeah. that's more gravel for the... No, it's right on the corner, right at the base. That, that, that's the road base. Oh, that is? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we can start doing some stuff, but, you know, I think this project's got to come before that one. What's this project? Doing the road the road to down the, orchard. the apple orchard. Okay. Top. No, I did not have that one on my list. <laughs> <laughs> apple orchard road? How long has that one been on the to do list? Well, we've always maintained it, but we worked hard at it last spring, so we had a little disruption. I kind of took the wheels off the cart. All right, so that's something you're currently working on, and yeah, what similar thing, grading it? Materials there is on site already. That just needs a little more expensive grade adaptation so it drains well. The one at the woodlot was made very well by the contractor that built it. 
just wasn't maintained. All right. So when will, when will the Orchard Road be done? Well, it'll be gone next week, but we'll work on how I'm going to do when we get back. I'm just saying, the board's, the board's going to put pressure on me to get these projects done. Well, I'd like to have it done before it freezes. It shouldn't take very long, because we did a lot of the drainage work last spring. So hopefully this fall. And all the materials here and the equipment's here, so it's easier to work in pieces that are. All right, and then uh, I and see the junior senior project or just senior? All both, both grades. Okay. Sure. But the juniors have been working with the some of them have worked they've been learning the equipment and they've also been working with the freshmen. So they've kind of been away, but now the exploratory they'll have a little more time to yeah. So the seniors will probably get more work done. Okay. And then I see the R and R trailers on site, yep. full of windows. Apparently, yes. <laughs> Apparently. I hope everybody wants. And so what's the schedule there, Tim? Uh, Christmas, vacation, February and April. Since you were talking about the wood lot. The VA is building some kind of security fence around its entire property, and it appears they've taken out the gate that we used to share with them to access our property. I don't know if they're going to replace it with a gate or if it's going to be a fence, but it'd be probably good to know that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, you know, I always had the thought we shouldn't be driving through a hospital. Even year, maybe years ago, it was pretty casual, but now it's. it's well, and that might not be an option if they're putting a fence. There might be a checkpoint Charlie somewhere if yeah. you can't get in to get to that spot. But so just, I'm unfamiliar with the way you're accessing it. I would just drive up off from across from Scotty's. So yeah, it sounds well, like if you, if you enter through the, the VA, in yeah, the past there used to be a row of brick houses on the left. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There was a cut through <clears throat> by the last two houses that went straight into our property, and it was. A straight shot to that new building. There was a road out to a gate. The road's still there. And that was a shorter distance to get into the woodlot, especially in wintertime. When I first started, that's the way we used to enter until the, the cell company finished the new road, the road in from Scotty's. We never used to in that way. Mm -hmm. So once the new road was in, then we started going that okay. way. Okay. That's, I never knew that Southern Road existed. Yeah. It's um, one big loop around basically. From a like from Route 9 into the VA through the woodlot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've been doing a ton of work up there. And they were gonna shut the place down. <laughs> you figure that one out. Yeah. Um, how about the water and electricity up to this to the forestry building? I haven't heard back from Mike Schaefer on that one yet. He was supposed to send me a proposal. Yeah. Check I, I, I sent him an email and tried to call his office today. So. All right, great. Okay. Uh, and then there was the uh, air conditioning project for SIBO. Oh, where where are the windows going in, Tim? A, the, a and B building. A and B? Yeah. And then the AC for building C? C? Yeah. So we're going to put split systems in. Um, and then the the city came in and reviewed our plans because it, it, it needed to be more uh, energy efficient um, and trying to make these new boilers be as efficient as possible. They want us to make the, the wall packs be the primary heat source, which ends up being the problem because unit ventilators are constantly running but in that 10% fresh air all the time. So how can you let in the middle of the winter cold air come in or go over a coil that has water in it but you're not moving uh, hot water is just sitting there. So we've been working with uh, our control company to come up with a plan uh, to integrate everything, tie up all the parts together. Like this building is all electronic and everything is working together on one one uh, system. This would be you say one system like one control platform? Right, so I can, you can run heating um, and exhaust supply and everything is on one program and you can manipulate it all. Right. Okay. Over there right now the, the heating system is on one system but each room is independent and you don't have control over each room um, and then that the wall packs and mini splits are going to 
just be another completely separate system and each room is on their own. Yeah, and th those are ductless, right? They're right. just so, so the air around from the room. Right. So it's going to mean pulling wires everywhere, back back to a control. All right, right. so that's well in the works, oh, yeah. being worked out. Yeah, I'm hoping that we'll start with that in, the, in maybe February or April, or maybe now that we've had this little glitch from the city, um, it may be put off, but... Well, what I'm hearing, hopefully it's a good glitch, meaning more energy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to happen when, when the forestry building gets built, too. They're gonna they're gonna sit in on and, and look over the design. All right. And it's gonna be mostly they're gonna want electricity. They want everything electrical now. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Even even the work I'm doing as a project rep, the the state on these housing projects are moving everything to electrical. Yeah. And that's that's the trend. Okay. Uh, and the sidewalks. So they came in, he did a, a crap load of um, elevation, and I, I, I need the plan, um, but I haven't seen I haven't seen that company come up with it yet to give me it. That's Mike Schaefer, but that's his um, surveying crew was here. I think they got held up, they didn't get the work and done. You got, this is money from the city that we get to spend at our discretion type of thing, what yeah. do you call it? A capital, capital improvement. Capital improvement, yeah. okay. I wish it was discretion. <laughs> well, well, you you have to petition for it or or, or submit for it, yes. and you get a certain amount. So every every the new rule now is every capital improvement project you submit, you have to describe or tell how that's going to be um, better for the environment, more cost effective, and you have to write a narrative up on that. Everything. So. Okay. What else, Tim? I know there's something else, but I can't think of it right now. Well, I had one, but I don't think it's a big, well, eventually a priority. Chip-activated entry doors? Did they kind of somewhere? I know, but that's Josh is working on that. I have yeah. new ones for the um, the shop doors that we had some old um, entryways you guys have in here that just never really work. I have new ones. The guy put one in and then went on vacation for two weeks um, and was supposed to program it for me. But, of course, that didn't work. But that, but that is another entry with a fob that you can walk up and um, I think we're going to set it up that they'll unlock at 7 in the morning, they lock automatically at 2.30 in the afternoon, then they can use their fob until 5.30 and then they have to walk around to the main way in the building with their key to work. Okay. So. All right, I guess let's wrap it up. I mean, we did a lot today. Um, well, I was telling Mike, um, we're looking, working with the city of taking some of our land and putting in planting pollinator plants in there. Uh, so like across from um, Scotty Driving Range is a place we're going to look for, this, for the schools portion. And that hillside by across from the DPW, the old state DPW. And there's a part up on Bird's Pit Road below the parking lot. It used to be corn years ago. They, we're looking at that too, but I think we're primarily going to offer up that site across from uh, spotties. That, that wet, wettish field there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but so what is this? Uh, it's part of the Energy and Conservation Committee. I don't know why we have a subcommittee, but I'm on it to looking for it for pollinators uh, seed. Um, but it's pretty expensive seed, so I think we'll just, whatever the funding they can raise, we'll probably just do strips of it at a time. But, and how does the school Say benefit from any of this? It does good, it all. Good Zero. faith. <laughs> we that has value, faith yeah. out of it. It will look good. We want to put a sign up. <laughs> the bees are happy. There you go. But it's land we never use. We just have to brush hog it. And once you establish uh -huh. these these plants, you don't have to. You don't. You don't brush hog it every year. You let it go every two or three years, and then you you know keep the invasives down and the woody plants down. Okay. Ready to adjourn? So Deb says yes. <laughs> Mark and James say yes. Thank you. Bye, Deb. <laughs>